Charles Brenton Huggins was born in Halifax in 1901. After graduating from Acadia, he took his medical degree at Harvard, then trained in surgery at Michigan. Uh, I thought medicine was just wonderful. It was vocation, avocation, religion, profession. It was a combination of sadness, uh, a chance to serve, uh, large amounts of comedy, uh, dollar sign didn't enter into it. We were all young priests of medicine. His enthusiasm led him to join the new Faculty of Medicine at the University of Chicago as professor of urology. Chicago was unique at this time in that professors were required to do research in order to teach. It was in this atmosphere that Dr. Huggins began his great work. In studying the physiology of dog prostate, inevitably we came on these large prostate glands the size of a grapefruit. And at first we were vexed to find a tumor of the prostate where in a study designed to be physiologic. But after encountering three or four, and it occurs always in all, in all old male dogs, and after encountering uh, several of these uh, conditions, we decided we'd make a study of, can of cancer and hypertrophy of the prostate of the dog. And we found it was very simple to uh, make the thing heal. Namely, uh, orchiectomy would uh, cause the tumor to regress. And then testosterone would restore the, the disease, not to normal, but to the original disease. And third, estrogens would cause regression of the uh, tumor in a dramatic way. So we had control over a tumor of a dog. We could make it grow or regress uh, as we pleased. We could do it by surgical means or uh, medical means. It, it was the first demonstration that a cancer, a cancer that was lethal, that was common, that, uh, that uh, whose, cell, uh, whose cells migrated widely and, and, uh, and grew in, in different uh, conditions in, in, uh, in bone, in uh, liver, in, in brain, that in all these different regions, the, the simple expedient of removing the source of uh, testosterone led uh, these cells, wherever they, they had grown inappropriately, to disappear. One could uh, and can uh, do the following. A gentleman with far advanced cancer will come in the clinic. You say to him, sir, all you have is far advanced cancer of the prostate. Take this prescription. Have it filled. It'll cost you 25 or 35 cents. Come back in two weeks and uh, you may be better. And the patient comes back four times out of five. He said, thanks to Almighty God, I am better. For this work, Charles Huggins shared the 1966 Nobel Prize for Medicine and Physiology. But for him, the Nobel Prize was not the culmination of a career, merely an important milestone. What was truly important was the work and the delight of discovery. Science is immutable. Uh, it seems to me that the rules for discovery have been set down. Uh, there is no shortcut. There are improved instruments which are useful but not essential. The most essential thing is the use of a uh, rare uh, instrument called human brain. Uh, if one will uh, use logical principles plus time uh, plus commitment, then uh, discoveries are inevitable. In addition to a steady flow of discoveries throughout his career, one of Charles Huggins' greatest gifts to science was his role as mentor. Some of the best minds of modern medicine learned their craft working with him at the Ben May Laboratory in Chicago. Uh, Dr. Huggins avait aussi une espèce d'aura uh, qui uh, se reflétait partout. Il avait uh, une nature humaine extrêmement chaude, c'est un type qui, qui reflétait, le, si vous voulez, une grande 
capacité de communication, euh, d'amener les gens vers lui, de les choisir comme il faut et de leur proposer euh, des projets de recherche euh, adéquats et de les inciter à prendre la bonne voie pour les résoudre. I've been particularly blessed by having one pe uh, wonderful young men and women work with me. And uh, selection of the personnel is the most subtle of the art. Uh, so I gave up. I didn't select people. They selected me. And they came in. All they got from me was a classical education. They learned biochemistry and uh, uh, morals, industry, uh, total commitment. And we talked about everything with two exceptions. There was no conversation about sports and nothing about politics. But uh, anything about art or science was fair game. In his Nobel Prize acceptance speech, Dr. Huggins said that the doctor is blessed above all men in possessing the right and privilege to care for the sick. Over a lifetime of achievement, Charles Huggins returned that blessing many times over. It's not often that discovery is made so quickly, so immediately, and demonstrably uh, benefit uh, your, your, your patients. And, and, and since, the, um, since the basic intervention could be carried out by really any practitioner around the world, it, uh, the, the amplified benefit was just extraordinarily broad. So there are tens of thousands of people who, who have experienced, um, you know, the, the advantage, uh, the dividend that flowed from the Huggins' discovery. Comme Charles Huggins était a chirurgien, très compétent, he treated directement avec des patients, ou lit des patients, des milliers d'entre eux, avec les meilleures techniques chirurgicales du temps et avec beaucoup de succès. Charles Huggins s'est posé la question, est-ce que je peux faire plus? Il s'est répondu à lui-même, oui, je peux faire plus. Oui, je peux traverser des nouveaux sentiers de découverte. Et le résultat a été, il a fait plus.